everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lucy and today I'm joined by the fantastic Emma Gannon. Hello! Emma runs a hugely successful blog, Girl Lost in the City, and her book, Control Alt Delete is coming out very, very soon. So, Emma. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. I'm really excited. I this don't know if you so can exciting. tell. So, explain to us all what inspired you to create Control Alt Delete. So, I have had a blog, girllostinthecity.com, for about seven years now. And obviously, I love social media, love sharing my life online, as we all do. But um, it got to the point where I just wanted to write something a little bit longer. Mm. I just wanted to put everything in something a bit more concrete, spend a little longer on my writing yeah. and just really craft something that I could hold physically. So yes, I don't know, I've always wanted to write a book. So in your own words, what is Control Up Delete about? So it is a millennial memoir about that decade of sort of the late 90s, early noughties where the internet has sort of boomed and I guess of our generation we discovered the internet for the first time mm. and I just find that a very funny part of growing up when we didn't have snapchat we didn't have instagram yeah. like kids do these days we just had really clunky computers and just worked out what it all was about what do you think the difference between teenagers growing up now like do you think they're growing up differently I think I think every teenager has always the same problems so whether you've got msn or you've got snapchat or mm. you have nothing for example I think bullying unfortunately probably oh, yeah. does exist doesn't really matter what platform you're being mm. bullied on it could just be in real life or online so i feel and even sort of wanting to have a date or having a crush you know all of that those things of being a teenager it's very universal um it's just that the internet has only been around for 25 years yeah and i find that thing, fascinating it? Yeah. i had this light bulb moment of oh my god, I'm as old as the internet. Like, we were created on the same thing. day. So why don't I write a book about, kind of, um, chronologically, mm. how I grew up online? So in this kind of social media age, I really hate calling it that, but it is. We're living in kind of this world that's so oversaturated with social media. And I feel like there are times where I've realised that I've been on my phone or on Twitter for like four hours. Mm. How do you switch off? Like, do you find social media draining at times? I think I used to, I think back in the beginning where I had a blog and I wanted to kind of be a bit more well known, not mm. in like a kind of fame hungry yeah. way, but I did want people to read yeah. it. I was like, oh, I'm going to read my blog. Yeah, I'm putting exactly. effort, I'm putting effort into this. So I think I was very sort of slightly manic and really kind of spending a lot of time trying to build up some sort of internet presence. Yeah. Um, I did put a lot of time into it, I did put a lot, a lot of time into connecting with other people, mm. connecting with other women, connecting with other bloggers, and that was quite, not stressful because I loved it, but it was just very um, full on. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm edging away slightly, and I also talk about quite a lot on the podcast at how when you get older, you get more comfortable with yourself, yeah, and you don't definitely. need as much validation, so I can kind of happily have a nice day, mm. do a few tweets. But I don't need, you don't need the, the kind yeah. of um, validation of people liking it and mm. commenting as much. But um, I would say that actually I use social media in a very professional way mm. at the moment. You know, I think I have the podcast and I've got the, yeah. my book. And although it doesn't seem professional because it's very fun, mm. it is work. And, yeah, you know, exactly. I, you know, I do earn money via mm. the projects I work on. So um, I would say I'm quite private. Yeah. I do I do yeah. share like a lot online but I feel as I've got older I kind of keep a lot back. Mm. And you do kind of touch on that in the book as well about how um whether it's a vlogger or a blogger they'll put stuff up about their life but it won't necessarily be the whole story. Okay, so what I really love about the book and your podcast and you is that you really empower other women and you celebrate other women's successes, which I think is such an important thing to do and that a lot of people struggle to do in a way. Um, how important do you think this is? And so important. Yeah. But I also understand why sometimes it's hard to do. Mm. Because I think, so um, I was reading something recently with uh, Sheryl Sandberg and Lena Dunham, um, an interview with Lenny Letter. Yeah. And apparently, back in the day, there would only be one job for a woman with men around the table. Mm. For example, you know, in like a boardroom yeah. or, you know, in a big firm, it was hard for a woman to come in and do that job. Yeah. So there were fewer jobs for women, and we're talking a while back. Mm. Now, uh, the mentality is sort of still there. It's mm. like, there's not enough room for the both of us. Yeah. Mentality. Which... And like, 
if you get it, then I can't, and we're in competition. Yeah. And basically, um, lean in circles, which is Cheryl Sandberg's little groups that she mm. sets up um, at companies, is about the opposite and about how there are so many more jobs now, there is no need to be competitive, there yeah. is room for all of us, and also how amazing it is and how amazing it makes you feel when you work together and yeah. not with, uh, not against. Yeah. So my example is always that, um, obviously Lena Dunham has mm. been a massive supporter of so many women. She's given quotes to the front of lots of books. Yeah, definitely. She is such a ringleader for just, you know, let's all do this together. And by helping other women, she's become more successful, yeah. not less. Exactly. I think it does show because I think it's kind of a karma related thing, but I think if you're supporting other people, like they're only going to support you in turn. Yeah, so exactly. It's kind of what goes around comes around type of thing. Absolutely. And I talk about shine theory, which is Anne Friedman's mm. um, thing that she wrote about in New Yorker, I think, um, about how um, it's the kind of Kelly Rowland, Beyonce <laughs> vibe yeah. of um, <laughs> befriend powerful women. Yeah. And you in turn will be more powerful. Mm. But I think as well, you should support people who support you back as well, because there's nothing worse than feeling like you have to support someone who hasn't necessarily been yeah, that supportive. Yeah, exactly. And that's when you're kind of forcing something. I don't mm -hmm. think you should force it. I think you know when it's a natural collaboration yes, and you're like, brilliant, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to people who want to put things out there but have the fear, as I call it, yes. of, of putting their creativity out there? Well, I would say that you have to put it out there in order to improve. Mm. So God knows what my first blog post is. <laughs> How embarrassing would that be? Although it is still up because I don't believe in yeah. deleting my past. I'm yeah. like, I, my first um, video so thin, it is so shocking. Is it? It's like 20 minutes of unedited <laughs> mumbling. That's so funny, yeah. but don't you feel that like, past you, yeah. like tried yeah. I tried, yeah. yeah. It's like you should respect exactly. that she tried. So <laughs> I respect my old blogging mm. ways even though it's really embarrassing. So what I thought was, I'm gonna be in this for the long haul. Yeah. Like this is not gonna be an overnight thing. Yeah. Maybe this blog will take off, maybe, it's, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll get a book deal, maybe I won't. Mm. But it was very much, let's keep trying. Yeah. So I think, I know this is annoying, but consistency is really important. And um, you know, when people say like, you know, how to be a writer, for example, and I used to go to all these talks, how to be a writer, yeah. I used to, buy books that was like 10 ways to be a writer <laughs> the truth is you've got to write you've got to write to be a writer you've got to yeah. write it might be absolutely rubbish mm. but um you are doing it and i think that's yeah. the most important thing and you will improve i genuinely think writing is like playing the piano mm. seven years of blogging made this easier yeah. to write yeah because i just i'd kind of practiced and I knew that it, I couldn't wait for the inspiration. I couldn't wait for the perfect moment mm. with the birds singing and, you know, a coffee and a cafe. Exactly. It was like, open your laptop and get to work. Just do it. For me as well, like, I have a newsletter, which um, has been recommended by loads of amazing mm. magazines. It's fab. Which You're is not also, right. I no. never thought it would be. This yeah. Is, I just, I love doing it. And I know people say this and it's like, whatever. But <laughs> I would write that newsletter, yeah. even if just a few people One had subscribed yeah. because I get a lot out of it. Mm. It's like my kind of diary because mm. I do it weekly. I can reflect back on my week yeah. and it's very, very personal, Yeah, which is why I like it being an email form because mm. it's very much from me to you. It's not really like a blog post where it's just public consumption. So um, if you're doing something and you would do it anyway, then that's brilliant. So the one thing that I really took away from this book, there's a section where you talk about permission and about how social media and blog blogging um, is a way for women to put stuff up there without permission. Mm -hmm. And that really just like resounded in me. I just think, yes. What are your thoughts on that? And, you know, because I think it is such a freeing thing that in a lot of ways women create things or people do create things, but are waiting to be, to seek permission. Yes, exactly. Well, so, I'm talking about the industry as a whole, not necessarily just me, but mm. um, what I found really interesting is, you know, back in the day, you would need to submit your writing and someone would say, yes, I like this, we will publish it. Yeah. And that is still the case in many ways, but we've kind of broken the mould of, if you want to write something and publish something, you just hit publish. Yeah. You are the in, totally in control of your own work and you're in control of who sees it. Mm. We can even pay for our own adverts on Facebook. Yeah. If you wanted to spend 100 quid 
and get a thousand people to read your blog post, you could. I know that's a bit weird. I don't know who would do that. Yeah. Because it's nice to build up an organic following. But the point is that, you know, if you release a song, there are ways where you can get mm. that to people and you get it as their hands without someone saying, you know, the gatekeeper, yeah. you know, in a suit saying, yes, you can do this. You can do this. And yeah. I just think how brilliant mm. that we can just do and say and publish whatever we want to do. Yeah. Um, so from that respect, yes, it was very much, um, I think we've always, well, I've always felt like I need permission and even need permission to be myself. Mm. It's felt like I need to be validated, but well, that's the I thing. Don't, don't need to yeah. and just do it. This was quite a scary book for me to write because mm. it's quite cringe in places. It's quite personal. There's personal anecdotes, which were hilarious at times, but also quite like moving and just, just brilliant. But it's very, it's, and, and anything that you do, even if it's a YouTube video or a yeah. blog post or a book, it's very um, scary when it's so personal. Mm. Um, so I think it's amazing that you can just kind of give yourself permission to share whatever you want to share. What were the challenges of writing this book? What to put in and what to leave out. Yeah. Because, like we were saying earlier, mm. you know, a book is a, you're curating your memories. Yeah. You're structuring it in a way. I think there's a difference between a diary and a memoir. Mm. A diary would just be a mess. Yeah, every single Whereas thought. a memoir is very much, is this necessary for the reader? Yeah. Because I don't think they need to know that. Is that just me being a bit self-indulgent? Let's cut it. So I think it was very much, I've got a funny joke, but will it help the story? Yeah. Not really. So I think for me, it was very much like when my editor was like, oh, we need to cut this whole page. It was me saying, okay. Gosh, yeah. Like, I spent ages on that, but I get it. It's yeah. not relevant. So it was a challenge to know what to put in and what to leave out, but I sort of, at the end of the day, let it be what it is. Mm. It's just, <laughs> yeah. I think it is just brilliant and personal and it really connects the reader by, you know, your stories and your anecdotes. Um, so yeah, I think Thank everyone you. needs to pick this up because it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And the final question, what is next for Emma Gannon? Oh my God. So, um, I want to write another book. Yay. <laughs> and I'm saying it on a video, so. Yeah, it's know, real. It'll be embarrassing in like eight years time, but <laughs> where's that book, Emma? Exactly. Um, but I want to just carry on um, with the podcast. A few people have said, you know, is it going to stop once the book comes out? Because mm. obviously they're tied I in together. Not. But no, I'm going to carry that going. on. Yeah. yeah, definitely going to make that bigger and better every um, step of the way. Oh. And then um, I'm working on a few projects that are writing based um, and it's something I've never done before. Oh, so it's a different intriguing. It's a different medium completely. Ah, so I'm working on that at the moment. Carrying on, just making doing what you're things. doing. Just yeah, make, making things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's it, really. Oh, amazing. Thanks well, for having me. Thanks for being on my channel. Thank I'll you. leave all of Emma's links down below where you can buy the book and follow her on Twitter, her blog, her podcast, everything. Hi, no problem. problem. So nice of you. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you can, please do pick up Control Alt Delete Emma's book. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.